As of right now in this recording, I have now owned the console for 4 months. It is said to have been one of the most controversial Nintendo consoles they have made, but it is also to be said that it was the console that was needed to push them a little further and make some of the best consoles that people have ever seen, the Nintendo Switch. And that is the Nintendo Wii U. You people may probably ask, why on earth would you buy a Nintendo Wii U? Nintendo Switch has basically everything that it wants to be, handheld and then TV mode, and it's basically all the games that Nintendo Wii U has, but much more. So why buy that? Yes, I'm gonna explain all, all about it, why I own the console, and what sort of pros and cons I have with it. But yeah, I'm gonna dig into it right later in this video. This is my first review of a game console actually, not a video game but a game console because this is something I recently owned, my very first Nintendo console. So now, let's begin, and what do I think of the Nintendo Wii U? The Backstory I'll take a guess and say it, you all probably know about the failure of the Wii U, so I'll just make a quick resume. So in July 2011, Nintendo has officially revealed the Nintendo Wii U, and it was kind of confusing for everyone because when they showed it on the trailers, they didn't quite reveal the console itself. It's more about their new controller and how innovative it is. But you know, even I was confused when I first watched it. I was like, "Wait, uh, this is the Wii U, right? Why are we always seeing the gamepad?" And yeah, they didn't even show the Nintendo Wii U itself on the ending of the video and that's just something they could have done so that everyone would not be left confused. But hey, they have actually did show it. And that was right there. Can you see it? It's right there in the corner of the TV. Yeah, bet you didn't know that, did you? But that was only the beginning of the end. In 2012, Nintendo has released the Wii U console together with the launch title known as Sumpy U, Nintendo Land, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, I bet many people saw it as a rip-off game of Mario Kart, and then New Super Mario Bros. U. Yeah, the games are really hitting people that much, like it's very unfulfilled, there aren't any mind-blowing games that they're seeing here, so that is kind of leaving a bad mark for Nintendo. <laughs> Not to mention the commercials, I mean what were you thinking there? And then throughout the years, they're trying to bring up some more games like the Super Mario 3D Land, and then Super Smash Bros. Wii U, and then there's the Wind Waker that I recently bought, but it didn't quite save the Wii U. It only sold 13 or 15 millions, and yeah, Breath of the Wild was like the very last main game to have ever been released on it, and that was a very fitting ending, since it's only just made it a new beginning for Nintendo. That is basically a short story of how they failed the Nintendo Wii U, and how it didn't quite uh, bring many more people to the Nintendo universe, until much much later on. So um, I bought it, and now it's time for me to talk about it. With the backstory out of the way, I can now present to you all this. Voila! The Nintendo Wii U Deluxe Set. It's a black colored, silky smooth console that was released back in November 2012 by Nintendo. And alongside it, they have also released the white model that is called the basic set. Now the most important difference between those two is the storage space. The one that has 32GB, the deluxe set that I have. And the basic set only has 8GB. And what's the difference between those uh, in price tags? What? That was... <laughs> something. I mean, there are probably only going to be a handful of games you can play on this thing, so don't consider buying the basic version. Especially with eShop, that I'm going to explain much later in this video. But still, 32GB doesn't sound all that impressive either, considering back in 2006, Sony could release the FAT model of the PlayStation 3 with 40GB. But fortunately, there's actually a lot of games you can still play on it, and I still have some space left to actually play as a big handful of games there. But whatever you do, if you have the choice of both of these worlds, don't choose the basic version. Always due to the deluxe ones. That is luckily easy to find. But hold your horses, people. We can't talk about the Nintendo Wii U without... The Gamepad. 
But you know Nintendo, they can actually be very inventive when it comes to video game devices. We have Nintendo 64 with full analog controls, the Nintendo GameCube with its very weird but also very interesting and famous controller, the Nintendo Wii that could go full motion control, Nintendo DS, one of my favorite uh, handheld devices ever, that can actually go full wireless uh, without any people you play without any cables, and not to mention internet. And then we have the Nintendo Switch that can actually play both on the TV, but also as a handheld. But the weirdest one of them all has got to be the Nintendo Gamepad. It is basically a giant controller with a screen on it that pretends to be a handheld device. But I think that's the point. Like, it has the similarity to the Nintendo DS and the Game Boy Advance because of this, the middle screen and some of the buttons that look pretty the same. And also, like, the device itself looks like it. But just because something looks bulky, big, or strange, doesn't mean it's all that bad. Like, I may have some grown fingers, but I really like to play my games on the gamepad. Like, it fits so well, and it actually feels well. Like, when I'm playing this on my a, a gamepad, I kinda pretend that I'm playing a good HD game on my, on my handheld device. And it actually feels really nice. Like, I played New Super Mario Bros. issue without turning my TV, and it actually feels very fine. And if you have a friend that wants to watch TV or whatnot, you can just use the gamepad and just play your games there. Very inconvenient. But there's more to the gamepad than that. It also has the touchscreen and the gyro control, just like the Tinder 3DS. For example, in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, there were some levels or shrines that they managed me to use the gyro control. And it feels very fine. And you don't even need the sensor bar that comes with the Nintendo Wii U. It's mostly used for the Nintendo Wii games. But if there's one thing I have to complain about the Wii U gamepad, which is pretty major, is that it easily kills the battery in life. Like, it's almost like it's taken its entire soul when I'm playing a game. It only took around 3-5 to five hours to just go full red. And if it goes red, it means it's going to take around 5 minutes to actually get completely drained. So most of the time I had to lay my gamepad with the recharger, or it's just going to drain up all the energy very quickly. While I do not like the fact that it has a very short battery life, which is kind of unacceptable as a wireless controller, the Nintendo Wii gamepad has opened up for more possibilities of gameplay, thanks to its sound control and its touchscreen, especially when Wii U games has used it for its full advantage. And that concludes the review. Yep, all we have to talk was just the Nintendo Gamepad, just like Nintendo did at the E3 2011, and that costed them a big catastrophe for them. Okay, of course not. We also have to talk about the Nintendo Wii U itself. Of course we can't just talk about the handheld controller. We have to talk about the games, and the console itself, and how much it has delivered. So, let's do it! After some few preparations on the Wii U, the very first thing you see when you turn on the system is your me that you just created. He coming down to the screen and greets you in this white space of the Wii U. And then there comes towards some other me's that's coming from their own respective applications. For example, friend list, parent to control, system settings, Wii chat. Which was once used like Sky where you could communicate with others on the gamepad, but it's not usable anymore. And then there's eShop and the Miiverse. Miiverse was like the social media of Nintendo, but I heard they actually closed it down because there was a lot of weird stuff going on there. I guess it's a good thing, but it's kind of a shame. And then what you see, either the TV or the gamepad, is your own games on the main menu. Like, I have games like Super Mario 64, two of them in fact, Paper Mario, Klonoa Empire of Dreams, I really like that game, Mario Kart 8, and all the games that I have on disc. And of course, I have YouTube and Netflix that was already um, downloaded. And then Karaoke, I never actually used it. And then Dirty Log, where you can see all the games that you have played recently or what you played the most. And then you see the Wii main menu that is its own application. I don't know why they did that, but I guess it's fine. 
I really like the main menu. It's so simple, yet so clean. Get it? And then on the background, you can see all the buttons just flying around in this white space. It really just feels like you are like in a Nintendo universe. And I really like that feeling. Want the Nintendo Switch? Yeah, it's just as flat as paper. But on the Wii U, there's just so much about this detail that it's just like just the background of your thing. Alright, alright, I may be rambling a bit, but... But... It's just part of the Nintendo charm that they once had for the Wii, DS, DSi, and 3DS. I love it! Oh, and my favorite thing about the main menus is the music. Like here, it just makes you feel so relaxed, empty, yet in a very good way. You feel so lost and empty and something about the music just feels so mesmerizing. Just like on the PS2, it kind of reminds me of that. Where you first start the console and then you hear this very overwhelming sound. And then the second, you're going to hear this very lost music. So because the presentation alone, I'll give this console a 10 out of 10. Okay, we just have to wait a moment. Cause now we have to talk about... The game. This is a category that is interesting to talk about here, because as you all may know, the Wii U didn't get a whole lot of support. I mean, it does get good third party games like Zombie U, Batman Arkham City Armored Edition, um, FIFA games, uh, Just Dance? Okay, I can't really think of many. That is because the Wii U didn't get a lot of support by the third party. I think it's right at the second half of its lifetime. I think the 4 party support is kind of dead, so Nintendo had to single-handedly uh, handle the Wii U itself so that it looks uh, notable. Or else it may look like the company has truly given up on the console, and maybe just video gaming. I mean, some journalists are just straight up saying that Nintendo might as well die because the Wii U just doesn't do well. Which is kind of extreme. But as the saying goes, even a broken clock can write twice a day, and they have the first party to prove that. Actually, now that we're talking about games, let me show you my collection that I currently have right now. Oh, and this? This is the Kingdom Hearts 3 Steelbook case. Can you guess what's inside? Super Mario Galaxy 2. That's because I couldn't find this game cheap, and that was my only option. Buying only the disc and not the case. Ah, uh, yes. Nintendo games are really cheap these days. Around the time the console was pretty irrelevant, people actually saying that the Wii U has almost no games. Which is debatable, but when it comes to a total of games you can play on it, then you, sir, are dead wrong. Because in this one hardware alone, you can play Wii U, Wii games, but also Virtual Console. Which is something I was pretty sold on because you can actually buy most of these 19s games from Nintendo, like 64 games, SNES games, even Game Boy Advance games, which is kinda random because how come it isn't under free? Yes, I don't understand that. But still, I was sold on it. It's a big handful, so I'm only gonna talk a little brief on all these games that I have. And what game is better to start with than New Sumatra Brothers U, the launch title game? If I have to think about a perfect launch title game, it has to be something that can wow people right from the start. And then it will keep selling and selling. And the best thing is, it has to be a game that can take full advantage of the console, and it has to be look super unique and super innovative. And that would be a good sign for everybody, and you know, also those who made the Wii U itself. One of them has to be Super Mario 64, released in 1996. For the Nintendo 64. I simply can't imagine how much of an impact the Nintendo 64 has left to many people. Because I have a PlayStation 2, and there it can play 2D and 3D games. But I also have to remember that in, in the previous generations, the SNES and Genesis and other games uh, before that only can play 2D games. But then, gaming has evolved from the Nintendo 64, with Super Mario 64 coming up, showing everybody how this iconic character can fit in into 3D gaming as a platformer. Because now you can just roam around the world and not be stuck on a 2D scroller. This game must have been truly special to many people. And yes, it was very revolutionary at its time because it really does demonstrate how 3D gaming can look. However, New Super Mario Bros. U is not one of the grand launch titles ever made for a console. 
it just looks like a typical 2D market you can play in almost any Nintendo consoles ever made. And ironically enough, this game doesn't try much new. Okay, two things. One thing is that you get a new power-up, which is definitely not an inferior version of the cave from Super Mario World. And other thing is that you're playing multiplayer with a friend, and if he uses the, uh, the gamepad's touchscreen, he can make a platform. Yes, that'll definitely win people over. Seriously though, I can't imagine this game making a great impression to many audience, especially when they're waiting for a new console that they're going to launch in 2012. Like, if I was one of them, I'd be like, Eh, I have the Wii version. I could just uh, play that one. But if I have to talk about the game itself, I'll say give it a whirl. It's super damn fun. It's been a long time since I played the, the new Super Mario Brothers game, so I played it right now. I finally got it, and I really had a blast playing it. It's surprisingly difficult, though. <laughs> it even has the new Super Luigi package, which is even harder. You can also buy the Switch version, which is known as New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. And it only costs 60 bucks. I know I'm giving it a lot of uh, red flags, but I'm just talking about how this game has given a really bad impression to Nintendo just because of uh, how it was released, or when it was released, really. But if you want to pick it up anytime, I'll say definitely. This is worth buying a Wii U for, because Super Mario 3D World is perfect. You can play up to four characters, Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach, and you get a new power-up called the Cat Suit, where you can climb on walls, and then you can meow all the time, and you can, you know, pound your enemies. And just like Super Mario 3D Land, this game here is like a reimagine of the 2D Mario games. And that kinda shows, because you're just going through the level to level just like the 2D Mario games, and they're all very fun. And you can also collect three stars, the green ones, and you can go and collect some stamps so you're able to post them on Miiverse. Oh wait, I can't do that. This game got a re-release on the Switch with an addition of the Bowser's Fury. And I haven't tried this version yet, but this is where you're going like an open world place. And I haven't really seen much of this honestly, but it looks pretty good and pretty worth your time. So anyways, whatever version you're choosing, this game is going to be a blast. Mario Kart Ace is exactly as you expect. It's a Mario racing game where you pick up some items, just throwing it at each other's faces with a Cooper shell, bananas, a blue shell, and everything, blah blah blah. And you can use that to go to the first place and win some cups, and luckily you can get free stars. Good luck to anyone who's doing the 200 CCs. You can also place your own meme, which is pretty neat. You can also still do the online uh, mode in this game, just like Splatoon and Smash 4. It's only a matter of time. This game has also introduced the anti-gravity sections where you're able to race while you're upside down. And the reason for that section is that you can steal the other racer's speed. Or at least whenever you're hitting them, you're just getting a lot faster. Which isn't it pretty neat stuff to make it more competitive. Anyways, if you don't have this game yet, why don't you have one? It's on the Wii and the Switch. Get it, get it. And here is another big seller of the Wii U, Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U. Fun fact, my very first Smash game is actually the 3DS version. I mean, that was my only way to play the Smash game since I really want to get into it. But in Smash 4, it's just so dang fun. Like, it's a big improvement to the Brawl one because I did hear a lot that the, uh, the Brawl one is very slow and everything. And now I can definitely feel the difference after playing the Smash 4. Now, there might not be a big reason to go back to it since we now have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but I could only say one, and that is you can play online, the online mode, for free. Yeah, that's the only big difference, but you know, Ultimate is better. But still, if you have a Wii U and everything, then you should definitely get this game here. It's super dang good. This game is super fun. So much so that people have been calling it the best open world game in the, in the entire decade. And I can kinda see why. After beating a few dungeons, you have the whole world to explore, the whole higher field. So nothing is really stopping you to go like the most dangerous place uh, in this entire game, if you want to. You can even face the final boss right off the bat, which I recommend you not to do if you're not prepared. Because this game can be a little overwhelming at the start, you have to try and get some armor, some sword and everything. But if you can actually handle the difficulty, then this game can be no problem to mess around with. 
like you have over 200 shrines to go to to increase your heart and your stamina. I recommend you to just uh, to just uh, increase more on your stamina because then you can climb on everything. Because this game wants you to climb on everything. You can climb around like Spider-Man. And that is a good uh, addition to an overworld game is that you can climb on almost anything. Not on woods or any ropes. Nope, you can just choose to just climb on something just because you have some sticky arms. If you have a Switch or a Wii U, I bet many of you doesn't have a Wii U for this game, then I would seriously recommend you to buy this game, this is so good. Some say though that the Wii U version is pretty laggy, but it's only really laggy when you go to the towns, like it could go down to 15 FPS, but when you go to the open worlds, it really doesn't look that bad, it's, it's a pretty good solid for the FPS. But anyway, give this game a try. Now, I demand it. Only Nintendo would have thought of such an idea as a shooting game, and that is Splatoon. Because you're not only shooting your enemies to gain the wins, you also have to shoot at the entire field to gain the win. The more you fill with your own paintings, the more the chances are you can win. And they have a story mode that you also can do. And I thought they are all really fun. I mean, I haven't been the entire storm mode yet, but I'm almost there. I was pretty excited to play this game here because it does look really fun. I tried this with one of my friends in Splatoon 2, and I really wanted to uh, buy the Splatoon 1 when I got a Wii U, and I had absolute no regrets. However, if Nintendo was ever going to plug out the online server of the Wii U, then the Splatoon 1 is going to lose its main appeal, so you can only do the story mode. And that sucks. So if you have the Splatoon 1 and just want to play this game until, you know, the Wii U is beginning to lose its online capability, then use your time and just have some fun there. There's still some people around. You know this character. She's beautiful, she's sassy, and she has the will of a fighter. And that is the witch herself, Bayonetta from Bayonetta 2. I have beaten this game and I had such a blast that I just want to read you all this again. Because Bayonetta is just that fun! I actually bought Bayonetta 1 on my computer, but I didn't have enough space, so I didn't play it that often. But then I bought Bayonetta 2, and then now I'm really getting into the Bayonetta games. I gotta go back to Bayonetta 1 again. But here you're just fighting most of the angels and trying to save the world and everything. There's a lot about the story that I didn't want to spoil. But I will say this, the gameplay is pretty dang good, that's all I really can say. Give it a try on the Switch or the Wii U. Oh, shit! <sighs> Star Fox Zero, the game that was released just by the time that everybody's taking their Wii U to the grave. From my experience, this is one of the Wii U games that relies much on the gamepad. Maybe too much, so much so that you can't even hear the characters' voices from the TV, but only the gamepad. What the hell? From my experience, this is one of the Wii U games that uses full capability of the gamepad. The gamepad screen is basically your first person mode because then you can aim something accurately. And then you also use the small robot that you're dropping from your ship in order to code something for the green screen. While I do think the job control is fine and all, I wish you didn't have to do that because, personally, I prefer the traditional controls, but if you just made it into a complete option then I'd be completely fine with it. Star Fox 64 3D did that. You have both the jump control and traditional controls, you know, from the original game. So why didn't they do that in Star Fox Zero, which is also a retread of the 64 game? Man, they really didn't want to let it go. And by the way, this game was released back in 2016, almost at the time when the Wii U is kind of overshadowed. So something tells me that this, this didn't even hit 1 million. But if it did, then you can just quote me wrong. I also have high hopes that this game is getting an overhaul for the Switch, if it ever is going to happen, just to ease up the controls so that everybody can enjoy it from start to finish. And that's all the Wii U games that I want to talk about. There are some, like the demo versions or maybe the PC ports, but I don't want the video to drag out too long, so now I just want to skip ahead to the Wii games. Even though Super Mario 64 DS really delivers and just coming into Nintendo in general, Super Mario Galaxy just delivers even more. With stellar graphics, hunting after stars in different galaxies in space, a nice little story, this Mario game is just unparalleled to many others. 
and I know the controversy is about Super Mario 3D All-Stars, but I'm really glad this game got released again just so everybody can play it. I wish I could say the same thing about Super Mario Galaxy 2. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is what I played before the first one, and I still think it's even better than the first, just because I think many of the levels just feel more different and were a bit more varied, and also the green stars just made the replay value even more valuable. Definitely give those games a shot. This was a time when Sega were trying to outclass Nintendo with their own games. Too bad it's gone horribly wrong. What I'm aiming at are the first two Sonic games they released on the Wii. Sonic and the Black Knights and Sonic and the Black Sheep. Yes, I'm calling it that. When I bought the Wii U in August, I decided to do a blind Let's Play for the first time, and that was Sonic and the Sega Rings. And as the first time of this game, I was also pretty mixed about this game. Controlling Sonic with nothing but gaming control is something only they would do. Like, you have the buttons to jump and something like that, but when you have to turn, that's where you have to use the most controls, you know, tilting the Wii remote uh, left and right. It's almost like I'm controlling a Sonic car. But when you first played this game, Sonic feels so sluggish, like, he's very slow when he's running, and his turning just feels kind of weird. You actually unlock all these abilities to make him control even better, have better homing attacks and stuff, and he actually goes even faster. But that is something they should have done right from the beginning. They shouldn't just uh, lock down all these better controls. They have to make it fun from the beginning. Or else you're just getting bad impression for these games. Not to mention, this game is also mission based. It doesn't really tell you which one is necessary in order to progress through the story, which I think they should have done so that we don't waste our time. But I feel like most of them that I have to do is just about rampaging against these enemies. But anyways, I don't I can't really recommend this game to anybody. But I can recommend you Sonic and the Black Knight, because you know, it's a much better game. The controls alone pretty much decides it because here he doesn't run automatically and you don't use the Wii Remote to control him. No, you're using the Wii Remote to swing your sword and the nunchuck to uh, to control him normally. Sonic and the Black Knight is also mission based, but unlike Secret Rings, it actually tells you which of the missions are necessary in order to progress through the story. So you won't be confused. But all these optional missions, they are heck more fun than Secret Rings. Like I am almost got the kick out of it. Like I know some of some of them can be pretty bad, but most of them I actually had a lot of fun with. I can totally recommend you Sonic and the Black Knight. It does have motion controls, but it's very harmless. You just swing your sword like a madman. Sonic Rider Zero Gravity is a great and unique racing game. It has an awesome story mode, some nice tracks, and the gravity manipulation makes the game look rad as heck. But there are two downsides. One, even by comparison to Mario Kart games, and especially the first Sonic Riders game, this game may feel pretty slow. Like, if you don't use the gravity to go even faster, then this game may look pretty boring. And two, this game also has this force motion control. You can actually use the D-pad to control the characters, but even when I'm not even tilting my Wii remote, it sometimes stands in the way. I can't recommend you guys to buy this game, just think about it a little. But the one game I can recommend to you all, and the one that has brought this series to the light again, is none other than Sonic Colors. This is the game where you can burst through the 2D and 3D levels, and you're using the wish powers to open your way. It's a pretty simplistic Sonic game, but I could definitely recommend you guys to play it. I do question as to why Sega didn't re-release this game yet, it's been stuck on this one console for 10 years. How many of you guys have ever wished that Mario and Sonic, the two very iconic characters, are going to unite to make one special game with all the characters, each of their own? Cause they sure have in 2007, with Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. This is certainly something not many expects. Like platformer games and a sports game? That doesn't really make sense. I have London 2012 Olympic Games and Winter Games, but I did start with the DS games. You should totally buy the DS version of the Winter Games, it's really good. Anyways, the Winter Games and London 2012 are really good too. Basically, all the Olympic Games are just a collection of mini games that you're playing, like the bobsled, snowboarding, athletes, swimming, trampoline, you know it. And they all made really good use of the Wii Remote, and not to mention the intros of the first three games, yes, including the 2007 ones, are all really good. This may not seem much to many, but just seeing Mario and Sonic in just one box art, as a kid, it was mind-blowing. Even though this is just a sports game with a collection of mini-games, and other platform games, 
this is how I actually got into Olympic Games to just watch many of the videos on YouTube. And for what it has, I think it's fine enough, so I can definitely recommend this to you guys if you have a Wii or a Wii U. Just get it for cheap. And then there's all the Wii games I want to cover up. I actually do have Metro Prime 3 Corruption, but I feel like I didn't play enough of the game to tell you a review of mine. But I can say the game is really good, that's for sure. But isn't it very fortunate that Nintendo, although they abandoned the compatibility for the GameCube, added it for the Wii. It does make a whole lot of sense as to why they put that, because if they didn't, then people are going to see even less of a reason to buy the Wii U. And maybe even me, because I treated this thing like a Wii Pro, man. Speaking of, you can actually play the Wii games with 1080p resolution. I do mind you, the games doesn't look graphically better, as they look pretty pixelated in few areas. But it does make the overall screen quality even better. I made these small video comparisons here so you can see the difference between 40p and 1080p resolution. So take a look. They don't give a guy a break, huh? We can't just stand around here. Right. Whoa! Get to Amy? What are you doing here? Fated lovers are always drawn together, silly. <laughs> Amy? Okay, you got me. I was running away from those robots. I was so scared. Uh, hey. But again, the comparison between them isn't that huge, since the Wii's graphics are really upscaled, it's more like the screen quality or resolution has gotten up. Not the game itself, but more like the screen. But again, I do like the fact that it looks sharper, that's all I really care about. Also the fact that I can replay my memories again after all these years. Now that that's over with, I can now go to the next objective. The Virtual Console, also known as the Legacy Contents. This is part of the reason I can't believe people say that this console has no games. Like dude, have you seen Virtual Console? It has NES games, SNES, Nintendo 64, Turbo Graphs, I've never heard of it, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, and Wii games, if you can find the disc any sort of ways. And even if Nintendo is plugging out the online for the Wii U in an upcoming year, you can still keep your games and you can download them again. So that's a good thing. The very first game I bought, that was Super Mario 64, you know, a good start. And I really like this game, like it definitely feels like a game that has kinda aged, but you know, I still said before that I really enjoyed this game. And my second game was Paper Mario. This is actually my very first experience playing a Paper Mario game, and I really enjoyed it so far. I came as far as Chapter 3, you know, the chapter where they're filled with ghosts in the mansion, but you know, I just turned 20 so I'm not that scared. Next was Metroid Zero Mission from Game Boy Advance. This is actually my second time playing a Metroid game. My very first was Super Metroid, but I didn't quite enjoy this game. Maybe it's just a little too complicated for me, so when I played Metroid Zero Mission, I heard from many that this is a remake of the Metroid game. I decided to give it a start because, you know, remakes, they tend to make games a little easier for everybody. It is so amazing, I almost forgot it was a GBA game. I really hope I can find the cartridge for this one. Like, just exploring everything, and the maps actually kinda eased my experience a little so that I can know exactly where to go and what places I haven't been to yet. I really, really like this game, and I can definitely recommend it to anybody, either the Wii or the Game Boy Advance especially. Next is The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. My very first Zelda game is Ocarina of Time. I actually enjoyed this game overall, but there was a few times in the game where I was kinda stopped in progress. 
just because there was something I forgot or maybe something like I had to figure out, but many times I had to go through walkthroughs to even know what the heck I had to do. And that kind of frustrates me. But the Majora's Mask, it didn't happen to me too often. I mean like, in the second dungeon, it was kind of there where I had to use the walkthrough to know what to do, but... So far, I really enjoyed Majora's Mask uh, right from the start. Like, there is nothing that really makes me want to call it quits in the game, and I just really want to progress with the story because... I had this great ambition to just save everybody from that freaking moon that's coming downtown. And that's a really great story they even begun, like right from the start. And then use the Ocarina of Time to just travel back in time. I can definitely recommend this to you guys, either 64 version or maybe the 3D version, I don't really know, maybe it's even better. You guys have heard very little, or maybe never about the Klonoa series, and I definitely don't blame you for that. The Klonoa franchises are 2.5D scroller games. Mostly 1 and 2. My very first game is Klonoa 2 Lunatia's Veil. Vale. I really hope that Nemco will one day port the game because it really brought me into the franchise. I actually did play Klonoa 1 right after, you know, the PS Classic on the PS3 and Vita. And I really enjoyed this game also. They've also made a remake in, on the Wii but it didn't sell so well and ever since we have never heard about the series since then. And last time they even thought about the franchise, they ported Klonoa Empire of Dreams, a Game Boy Advance game, onto Virtual Console of the Wii U. And I'll say, yeah, it's also really good. It might not be at the highest like Klonoa 1 and 2, but it's still worth your time. You can buy it on the Game Boy Advance or maybe the Wii U, your choice. It is much more puzzle heavy than 1 and 2, where you don't go uh, from the beginning of the level to the end. No, you actually have to do more puzzling, like collecting 3 stars in order to open a door. And it's not too drastic of a change, I mean in the end, it is a Klonoa game you, where you do some puzzling and stuff. But it's also very perfect for a handheld game, so kudos Namco. By the way, they're the ones who made Pac-Man. And last but not least, Super Mario Advance 4, also known as Super Mario Bros. 3. I'll tell you all right now, I really hated this game the first time. I played it on the 3DS version, you know, the NES version I played, and I was not prepared for how hard and challenging this game is. The game gets harder and much harder the further you go, and when you actually get the game over, then you're gonna have to start over all the way back. And the first thing is, the auto scrolling sections, I'm getting a lot of nightmares just by remembering it. But then decide to give the advanced version a second chance, and it might be the best version to play, it is so much more fun. Because one death you stop the game, no matter how many times you're getting a game over, you're only starting all the way back in a level, and not the world or, or the entire game. Second, they have upgraded the background so that it actually looks more appealing. I mean, it's a really nice details to have in the game. Third thing were the bonus levels, which were completely locked by the e-reader cards for certain Game Boy Advance games, including this one. It's a nice thing that Nintendo added that so that everybody can play all these bonus levels they have made. I mean, it would be a shame if you can't play them. Some of them were actually Japan exclusive, so that it's actually very hard to gain them. So, if you ever want to play Super Mario Bros. 3, then I highly recommend you to buy either maybe the All Stars version, but also the Advance 4. It's truly awesome. Oh, and by the way, you can also buy the free Sonic Advance games, if your Wii U were made for Japan. Unfortunately, there are some games that are only exclusive to Japan, so it's much more complicated to get them. Unless you have to go your way and make your account into a Japanese one. Is it possible or not? Anyways, I could have bought those games, but I can't. Thanks, Sega. So folks, that is all the games I want to bring. Like, I do have Mario RPG, it's really fun, it's really hilarious, but I think that talked enough, I don't want the video to be too long. So whenever people are saying that the Wii U lacks games, they're lying, because in reality, they're a big variety. Both old and new, you can't go wrong with that. But I think the reason people are bringing this trend, the Wii U has no games, is because we're talking about the system, and not all the games that got ported like came from the other consoles, we waiting for something that is very new and very fresh. And I can totally understand that. Even if we're not counting on the Wii U and its inferior power in comparison to the PS4 and Xbox One. Not to say the games are really bad looking, they actually look really, really fresh. But I think they were expecting Nintendo to make just as good console as PS4 and Xbox One, just in terms of power and graphics, especially when it's priced that high. 
but right now this system is very worth it like it's gotten way cheaper right now and something tells me it's going to get a lot more expensive in the future because it's a Nintendo console. Another neat and charming stuff I want to bring up is the eShop, because oh boy I really like how they're doing here. You have this chilling music at the background, and all the games are actually spread in different genres so that it's very easy to find them. And you know, the virtual console. One criticism I have though is that you can't register your credit card on the eShop, so you're basically forced to go to a convenience store and buy all these Nintendo cards they put in there. Do they realize how ludicrous it is? Like what if I just need one more penny to just buy a damn game? Dude! And the very last thing are the extras. What I'm talking about are the controllers and the recharger. Like the Wii U Pro controller. This is a must have for anyone who owns the system. It's also a battery lifesaver because it can save up to 80 hours. Like that is really insane for this controller. I also like that it has two analog sticks up instead of down because you know, I'm a PlayStation fan. And overall, it makes your experience with all these Wii U games a lot better because then you don't have to hold onto this very big bulky thing. Not because I think it's a bad controller, but I'm just saying that if you really want to play your games traditionally, then this is definitely it. Although there are some games that require you to use the gamepad in its full extent, so you can use this thing on every games. Then there's the GameCube controller, the Pikachu edition, which is actually a Wii Classic controller. You have to plug it onto the Wii Remote in order to use it, but it's fine because you're still playing your games wirelessly. It's made by a third party company named Hori. I guess they were kinda bored and didn't make this. Or maybe Nintendo made this because they were thinking, huh, maybe people really do miss the GameCube, and that's why they made it. I only bought this because I didn't have a Wii U Pro controller, and there were some games I really want to play traditionally, both the Wii and Wii U. And boy what a blast, because playing the Wii games like Sonic Colors and Super Smash Bros. Brawl has never felt better. Because guys, have you ever played Brawl with a Wii remote? It made me feel like a noob! Funny thing is, you can still use your Wii Classic on certain Wii U games like Bayonetta 2. And you can use it on the entirety of Virtual Console games. You know, also Pro Controller. I'll say Wii Classic is totally worth it if you want to play all your Wii games traditionally. You can't use a Pro Controller on the Wii games, only the Wii U and Virtual Consoles. You got it? Got it. And the last thing before I say it's a wrap, is the Wii U Remote Rapid Charging Set. That's a mouthful! That is when Nintendo has finally decided to make a recharger for the remote. That is where you get the thing that holds two batteries, and then you put it into the remote, then you have this recharger that you place your remote in, and you're getting an additional recharger which is also made for Nintendo 3DS. It is a necessity for anyone who owns a Nintendo Wii because then you don't have to worry about switching your batteries all the time because that is so 2000. So with that, I can just play Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 without any care of the world. Literally. We've come to a closure of this Wii U review while telling you all why I bought it instead of the Switch. After all, the Switch also has great games, and you can play it anywhere you go, while the Wii U, you can only play it anywhere in your house. And it's got some of the greatest Wii U games as a bonus. So what is it that made me not want to buy the Switch? Well, there are some few but really big reasons. I know it has been brought up too many times, but I really think the games are a little too pricey for their own goods. Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, they obviously deserve the $60 because they are very original, they are the launch title of the Switch, and they are very solid, really. I've only played the Mario Odyssey a few times, I managed to go very far in it in some of my other friends' Switch, and I really, really love this game. And also Breath of the Wild, you know, I own the game. But then they have ported the Wii U games with $60 price tag on them. Donkey Kong Country Freeze, $60. Pikmin 3, $60 also, Pokemon Tournament, also $60, and also New Super Mario Brothers U, $60, what? No way am I ever buying these over 5 year old games at $60, even when I'm owning a Switch. I know my money, and they know it's not worth it. Number 2, I've heard that these Joy-Con Drift has been a common problem, a common, real problem. Something that Nintendo should have fixed long time ago. I do like that you are getting 2 controllers in your Switch, but I didn't like how cheap they all feel. And if you want to buy new ones, oh man, I really hope you got the money already. Number 3, Nintendo Online Subscription. 
For anyone who owns the Wii U and PlayStation 3, remember the time when gaming consoles allowed you to play games online for free? I definitely do, and now you have to pay for it. I mean the one to say that this ape off that I own the console, I've actually played the online very frequently, like Mario Kart 8, Splatoon, and Smash 4. Smash 4 did lag a bit, but it wasn't nearly as bad as this. Why is it that suddenly people have to pay for online? Especially after a whole year of release in Nintendo Switch where you don't have to pay for it. The big difference might be that you can play these NES and SNES games uh, anywhere you go, but you can do the very same thing on the 3DS, so I don't really understand. Or the other difference might be that it only costs $20 uh, a whole year, but it really doesn't change the fact that it's really bad because I've seen the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate uh, online and it really doesn't look all that good. But also Super Mario Maker 2. If Nintendo doesn't fix or maybe polish the online subscription, then I totally don't think it's worth it. And plus all these old games they have put in, I can just buy them whenever I want to on my 3DS or Wii U. And the online is completely free, so there's a lot more better deal in this one. But of course, it doesn't mean that the Wii U doesn't have any flaws. Like the gamepad, it can be seen as a forced gimmick by many, many owners. Like, whenever a game asks you to use it, you have to use it, like it or not. And if it gets broken in a way, then tough luck, you have to try and get one, or else there are some games you can't even enter without it. Not even the system settings. And trust me, it can be hard to find a new one in a good functioning fashion, and at a really good price. I even think it's a bad idea that Nintendo are selling these Pro Controllers individually, instead of just bundling them in with the games and the console whenever they chance to. It just kinda shows that they were a little too desperate, and with the failure of the Wii U, I can definitely see that. But with all that said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really, really happy that I bought this console, my very first Nintendo console, with all these great games that I can get and play for cheap. And that includes all the retro games that I've mentioned. I've actually been wanting it for a long time, ever since 2013, but that is also because I just got a PlayStation 3, so I can't buy two things at once. But then, 7 years later, I finally got it with Super Mario Maker, but unfortunately it lost most of the appeal. Thanks Nintendo. So with all that said, can I recommend this to anybody? Of course I can, because not only do I have all these titles that's made for this console, but all these old ones back to the past. Not all of them mind you, but there's certainly enough to make you feel satisfied. Or you know, if you're just as broke as I am and didn't have enough money to buy the Switch and all the games, so yeah. So finally, I'm done with this review that I worked on in over 8 months. I'm so glad it's on my computer now, I don't want it to be there forever. So, hasta la vista! I've worked on it for a long time, and I'm really glad that I could share this review to any of you. So, see you later, and more of my contents.